Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. Hope everyone had a great Christmas or break. We're back though, short break for us for the Intermarche Wanty Go Bear, a uh, little Boxing Day present, although this will be up after that. Uh, their team preview for 2022, a team which had some highs and then some lows in 2021, but the highs were really high for a team which, again, incomplete budget information for these teams, but they seem to be on, firmly on the low end of budgets and um, around 10 million, 11 million, maybe higher with Vini Zabu, I think, as a sponsor of Vini coming in. Anyway, you know how the, what the drill is. We go through their 2021 season, wins, highs, lows, how many jerseys they held. Then we'll do transfers. There's a few interesting ones, actually. And then hot takes, predictions for which riders go to which races, which might be a little bit difficult for us. And this is the, the team that Benji's going to be an expert in because – Belgian team, more Belgian riders. I'm just here for the ride today. Um, and <laughs> and you can tell me the history of Holbert Holsons, et cetera. But before we get into that, mention our show partner, LaCole, who produced performance cycling apparel. They have bundles on at the moment. They've got a sport winter bundle where you can pair a sport long sleeve jersey and bib tights together to get yourself a pretty significant discount. There's also a similar bundle for Pro Aqua Zero long sleeve jersey. I have one of them. It's actually excellent here. And Pro Bib Shorts, again, with a discount. So if you want to get a full kit for the new year, you've got New Year's resolutions, etc. there's bundles with steep discounts on Lacole at www.lacole.cc. But Benji, Intermarche, I want to go there. Materio, gut reaction, good season, above average, or par or bad for, the, for them, for their expectations? I find it quite a decent season, but it's difficult to really look at it as simple as results. So if you look at the actual results, we see that they've got a Giro stage win, which is crazy good for a team like this, Taco van der Hoorn. They've got the Vuelta stage win with Ryan Tarame as well. And if we go even further, we also have another World Tour win with Taco van der Hoorn in the Benelux store. So that's three World Tour wins for a team that on paper was looking like a team that would have it very difficult to get World Tour wins. but where for me it's kind of lacking is the victories next to that. So there's no dot .pro wins. The other wins are mostly dot .1 races. Danny van Poppel taking Bashi Me Bash, for example. Then Taco van der Hoorn, Omlo van het Houtland. We've got Biniam Girmay with his first victory just after joining the team in the Classic Grand Besson Sans Doux. And then we've also got a stage win in Tour de La, and that is George Zimmerman, who also did, I think, uh, top 10 in that race and top 5 in uh, Deutschland Tour. So... All in all, nine victories in total, eight of which are not NC victories, not national championships. I think that's relatively good for a team like this. There's definitely worse teams out there when it comes to results compared to the team they had. And they also, remember Benji, they stuffed Arctic Race. We'll show it in the video, but you might remember my second edition of Worst Tactics in Cycling. Odd Christian Eiking should have won Arctic Race of Norway. Yeah. Uh, I think Herman's just kept on to it. But there's some bonus second drama there where they kind of stuffed up the last stage. But otherwise, again, Louis Mankey's Benji, he was on for a top 10 at the Vuelta, right? He was looking good. Yeah. Uh, I see him training all the time. He, like, you think these guys who maybe they're not big names, like they're still doing a guy like him probably doing like 30 hours a week in the winter. Uh, but, yeah, unlucky in that aspect. He came 14th in the Tour, which is like that's not that. That's not a result. But, yeah, I think it's an above average – Result just because getting holding the red jersey in the Vuelta where they also had bad luck, where Tarame got taken out by a crash, and then Old Christian Eichen kept it for ages and ages and ages into the third week, I think, on Covid Onga stage, he still had it. That's so much more exposure than I assume these 1 1 races. That being said, these 1 1 races are often in Belgium, like Memorial Frank Vandenbroek for their team, their sponsors know that's quite good, but like that Giro stage win is so much so much exposure because uh, they're just so much bigger yeah. races. But you're right, Benji. For, they're not regularly competing and winning at those dot pro races. That being said, they picked up Taco when no one else did. He was on beat cycling and they picked him up and uh, sort of like almost when the season has started, they picked up Biniam Gomai when no one else did during the season after he'd signed a four-year deal at Delco and I don't know what happened there. So... They're actually picking up, and, and Taco was their best rider this year. They've got Tarame on a, they did, you know, the, the goal with him is to win a stage. They've got George Zimmerman, <laughs> who's looking really good. I think George Zimmerman's really good, young yep. German, 24. 
I don't know, I think it's a team, uh, a season they should be pretty happy with. And it's like, what what can you expect? They're not going to win a world tour stage race. Like, what what else would you want to be seeing here, Benji? Like, Taco or or some classics results, like a shoulder price top five, maybe. Maybe Danny Van Poppel did come top five. I mean, he did well at Gen Wevelhem, I guess. So yeah, I think um, I think I'm mainly looking at the riders like Loic Fliegen, which I expected more from this season. I was hoping that Amy de would move up as well, and he ended up with a second spot, a third spot. So very close to victories, but not there. And I think in general, just a bit more results when it comes to dot one, dot two, perhaps, or even a, a dot pro race somewhere. Because to be honest, if you can win a Giro and Vuelta stage, you can probably win a Dot Pro stage somewhere. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys who are just straight up not world tour level on this team. Um, Ludwig de Winter, like guys, guys, honestly, I've not heard of, uh, and that's fine because this team's it's not been a world tour team for very long, and they're kind of piecing it together, adding bit by bit. But you're right, Vliegen's one. I think we were high on Benji. I was high on before the season. Lorenzo Rota. Showed flashes. I think Tour de Pologne was a little bit disappointing because they actually were quite strong, yeah. and they had like maybe Hermans Rota, Binyam Garamay, and they just it didn't work out. Uh, but yeah, I think a pretty good season, and they got some new recruits coming in. But the first people, the people going out though, odd Christian Iking, Benji to EF, Danny Van Poppel. You mentioned this off air, and I, I checked it because I the, the UCI rankings always bemused me. He's a top thirty rider. Danny Van Poppel in like a four-week period when most people probably thought the cycling season finished racked up like 600 UCI points where he came like seventh at Paris-Bourges, one Ben Chimay, fourth at Euro Metropole. He racked up so many points and he's gone. So I don't know whether they are where they are in that relegation battle, which maybe merits I don't think point. so. I think they're above at this moment, safe? but I'm not 100% sure. I uh, I checked it earlier. There's this guy on on Twitter, uh, Raúl Bancari. It's a uh, a Spanish guy, and he keeps track of like all the points and so forth. And I think I looked at it, and they were the eleventh team on it. So on paper, if I recall correctly, eighteen would be a world tour in in 2023. That number could be wrong because I don't have a godlike memory. But uh, yeah, they're certainly relatively safe compared to a lot of Sudal who's in trouble. Okay. Yeah. I mean. That's something to watch and something that I kind of wish the UCI would be posting about because it's like a Premiership League table. It's like the Premier League. Maybe they are posting it somewhere and I'm just uh, an idiot. Certainly possible as well. Uh, but, yeah, the relegation down from World Tour is certainly certainly something to watch because that's going to be maybe even changing how teams select riders like a Danny Van Poppel, who we don't think is that good at winning races but is good at coming fourth in a lot of races. Yeah, other transfers for Intermarche. Uh, outgoing is – or no, sorry, Danny Van Poppel, Benji, do you think that's a big miss for them? Or do you think – I don't think they're happy with this Tour de France. I think it's a big miss when it comes to UCI points, as you mentioned. You mentioned it, how close he is in that top 30, but – you got to realize that's above the likes of a Mark Cavendish, for example. So it's it's quite crazy how many points he racked up, like you mentioned. I think that's going to cost them quite a bit if they do end up in that uh, UCI World Tour ranking battle for relegation. Other riders gone is Jasper de Plus retired, Alexander Evans, I think, out of contract, Jeremy Bellico, Ludwig de Winter retired, Wesley Kreis has gone to cover this, Ricardo Manali, uh, the Damar beater. I don't know where he's going. It seems to be a question mark there still for him. Jonas Koch, Deborah, Peter Van Speybroek, Van Speybroek too. He's retired. Marit Lamertink, not sure where he's going. So, yeah, the two good riders are Odd Christian Eich and Daniel Pop out the door, who is probably two of their top five riders, I would say, pretty clearly, maybe even two of the top three. Uh, incoming Benji, Christoph, one-year deal. Alexander yep. Christoph, what do you make of that? Honestly, I think it feels like a replacement for Danny Van Poppel. And when I yeah, look at their point. results throughout the season, I see that the likes of Van Poppel gets lots of close positions. Now, Christoph is 69th on the World Tour ranking, so he doesn't have as many points at all. But he's able to get top 15s at Paris-Roubaix, for example, where the likes of Van Poppel didn't. So the question there is, what does the team want? He's got two stage wins at Deutschland Tour as well. Those are victories. Those are victories at the dot pro level that we mentioned that 
I feel like they are lacking. But if we then look at the rest of the season, no World Tour victory for Kristoff this season. So Daniel Wobble was able to win a, a World Tour race. Now, I do believe that Kristoff is able to win a World Tour race still, but it's getting harder and harder. Like, the guy's not 20 anymore. So it's going to get tougher throughout the years to get that World Tour victory for him. I think he's going to get very similar results to Danny Van Poppel. The only difference is that he's six years older. And I, I'm not sure if it's uh, the perfect switch, to be honest. I feel like it's kind of a, a break even between the two. I think it's, yeah, as you say, Danny Van Poppel with a little bit more upside in terms of could he do the Christoph thing and just fluke a result. Like He won a Tour de France stage last year. He won the first stage of the Tour de France, took yellow jersey in 2020, not that long ago. And even before then, his wins had been, you know, that that was his only win in 2020. And in 2019, he won, I did win, I don't know, he he wins irregularly and then can rattle off a couple of World Tour wins. I think it's a good signing. It's a one-year deal, so unless he intends to retire straight afterwards, he should be pretty motivated to perform straight away. Other riders include Dimitri Kleis from Quebec and Nextash. He was okay, Benji. I thought he was actually not a bad classics rider. 34-year-old experienced rider, 10th in Grand Prix de Volony, 13th at Tour of Flanders. I think that's a great pickup. I think that's also a great pickup. I think this team uh, is getting a rider there that can definitely get quite a few extra points for this team. Now, honestly, the one thing that I'm lacking there is for example, a lot of top 10 positions for this rider. I think he can be supportive. I think he got a great result a few years ago in RVV, by the way. But um, yeah, it's kind of that rider that can be supportive in races and could definitely get relatively far in a in a double classic. But I'm not sure he's going to be moving the needle in terms of victories. I think top tier classics domestique, if they want Christophe to be their leader there, I think it's just an absolutely brilliant signing. He's coming from Quebec and... The unfortunate negotiating reality is I assume he's on very, very small amount of money. Uh, other riders is Sven-Erik Bistrom, the Norwegian who comes with Christoph, 29-year-old. Uh, again, not a man who he doesn't win much. He's never won a race apart from Norwegian national champs. I think he's, again, just a domestique for Christoph, so that's fine. They're, they're putting a little team, mini team around Christoph. Two riders, Benji, from Lotto Sudal, who were part of the problem at Lotto Sudal, Kerben Tayson, 23-year-old, who had uh, three years on Lotto Sudal, and then Kobe Holson's 25-year-old. They're coming over into Marche. I, I don't really see where the, the points are here, and I don't even think these guys mm-hmm. are good enough to win World Tour races. I don't believe they're good enough to win World Tour races here. I think Kerben Tyson irregularly has a, a top five sprint somewhere. True. I think he got close to a sprint in the Vuelta last year, second in the Vuelta stage. Um, behind Pascal Lackermann ahead of Max Conte, so not he's the biggest not competition there. But he's 23, but on the other hand, I am not sure, considering this year, if he's grown compared to the year before. So that's sure. where I'm kind of like on the edge for him. But I feel like it's a valuable transfer to try at least. Because yeah. if you've if you got a guy that can sprint to second on a Velta stage, sure, the Velta sprint stages are not the best competition in the world, but that means he can do it in dot pro races as well, in my opinion. Then Kobe Gorsons, he's a bit of an odd fish, isn't he? Because I feel like in the Giro last year, we saw him quite a bit, where we saw him attacking pretty early. Was it on, was it 2019 or 2020 on the Etna stage? Etna 2020, yeah. Yeah, 2020, where he attacked early and then uh, no, he plenty of stuff happened on there, but he didn't get too much out no, of that that was Han van Hoeker. Oh, was it? Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was him too. All these Belgians, they're all the same. <laughs> I swear he did a break. So I swear he's done something. You're right, damn it. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I think in the Vuelta he did similar stuff then. But he was actually pretty consistent in the Vuelta of uh, 2020, getting 20 fold in GC. So I think he's a decent climber. He just needs to get past the barrier of actually delivering a result because that's kind of important. Uh, I think he's terrible. And he wouldn't be in World Tour level <laughs> if he wasn't Belgian. No, he's, he's awful. Like he's 25. Giro, he was in a break to Guardia San Fremondi. The finish was a... 3.1k, 6.5% climb, and he got dropped by Nelson Oliveira, Nicky Assant, Giovanni Carboni, and yeah, he lost like 20 seconds to Nicky Assant on a 3k, 6%. Maybe they attacked before, but yeah. The, the reason Kobe Hosens is a breakaway winning rider, this was 
maybe the weakest. No, no, Victor Lafay is okay, right? But like, he's no, he's no world beater. This is maybe the weakest break in a Grand Tour stage with a softish finish. We'll, we saw this year, and he wasn't top five in it. In in a where he should be really like, yeah. So. He didn't get results, and most of the time he'll be out of world tour with that sort of year at 25 years old, and I don't, I don't think he'll be good next year. Barnabas Peak has come in from Bike Exchange. The Hungarian was struggling to get a contract, 23 years old. I think the LPD Twitter account's done a bit of digging on him, and he is of the belief, and I sort of agree, that he's got really good data and was being limited at Bike Exchange, and he's got some really good numbers, and he points to he pointed to... The Settimana Ciclista Italiana race, new one, where this guy, Barnabas Peak, came second in a flat sprint behind Pascal Ackerman with, with good numbers. And um, he's 23. So, yeah, and, and but the reason he's being signed, obviously, is because he's Hungarian. They're going to the Giro. He's on a one-year prove, yeah. it, prove it deal. So I don't, I don't mind it, Benji. I assume it's on the minimum or something close to it. I don't mind it either. I do believe that he's come somewhat stagnated over the last couple of years. Perhaps it's indeed related to the team he was on, but ah, I'm still like, I'm hungry to see more because he hasn't proven himself and that's why he gets that one-year deal uh, to prove it, I guess. But to be honest, like, it's crazy how being Hungarian can get you a one-year deal that gets you straight to the Giro, to be honest. That's why Bike Exchange signed him, I think, or partly why. And then... The, the Grande Partenza got delayed in, in the Giro in Hungary, and now it's he's sort of got another contract, a lifeline, and I think he might prove it. I think he might, again, he's a quick – this is what we're saying. We've, we've kept saying this in the off-season, Benji, and you reminded me because I was I was a bit low on Kerwin Taysen, and then you brought me back, and I realized this guy actually can get you some points. That I guess their idea is let's get some average quick guys. We go to a lot of these sprint races, Barnabas Peak, get some opportunities to go for sprints, Kerbin Tayson, Christoph, etc. No harm in getting these quick guys because they got plenty of races to send them to. Uh, other transfers, Julius Johansson from Uno X, a Danish guy. Benji told me I think he's the track guy from the British where the British team tried to like – I don't know what happened in the, well in, in the Olympics. Benji is this guy? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's indeed that guy, a guy that crashed because I think the Brits rode straight into them or the other way around. No, My no, memory is not completely slow. lacking. And uh, okay, yeah, the, the Danish guys rode into the Brits, and he was the guy that rode into the Brits uh, because they were still on the road. Because uh, well, that's the case because the race stops, I think, when you catch the others, but they literally caught them too physical, but. That aside, I believe that this guy is a pretty uh, pretty strong rider. I don't believe he's proven himself completely yet. I do believe that he's got a pretty damn good engine, 22 years old. And by the Espoir result, I, I'm not sure that's really the, the thing I'm looking for, to be honest. But I feel like he's got a decent TT. But then the question is, can he get that somewhere in different types of races? Because being strong in a time trial scenario is great and all but i'd rather see you be able to do good in other races as well and at the moment i'm not completely sure that's there yet i think it's a decent signing like track guy coming across good upside young obviously you know as ben you said if you you can't be a tt specialist on intermarche they don't have the budget the equipment is is no good uh other riders is Lawrence wies belgian from bingo bingo al sorry nearly pronounced it incorrectly uh <laughs> 23 years old I don't know who he is. Uh, he attacked maybe. in LVL on, oh, was it Laredut or something at some point? Just before Karapaz went, I think. Or he was not the break in LBL. I remember his name. Okay. Maybe he's Loic Fliegen 2.0. Don't think he'll move the needle. And then Hugo Page, or Page from uh, the Conti team, the FTJ Conti team. He's 20 and yeah. he has some... Sprint. Is he a sprinter? Okay. Uh, he's got a sprint. Uh, I'm not sure he's a complete sprinter, but he had a decent sprint in a Tour de Loire, which is, the, is a dot two race for uh, mostly youngsters, to be honest. But um, I haven't seen the craziest results either, like top tens in the likes of uh, uh, Conti sprints. And uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to move the needle, but the guy's only like 20, so he's got time to prove himself. I'm just feeling like there's other talent out there that I would have signed instead. 
All right, now we're going to move on to their goals for next year and the teams they should put uh, together to construct to achieve those goals. Now, a correction from the producer, the UCI rankings, so the 19th ranked team gets booted and they can't get a World Tour license in 2023. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Intermarché yep. okay. at the moment are 17th on 9,005 points. Arkea 18th, just over the above the uh, relegation zone on 8,697. I was slightly off, only slightly. <laughs> oh, no, I think we, you, you said they were safe. They, are, they were safe this year. Cofidis are... Uh, Currently, the first relegated team at eight two eight seven, and Lotto seven nine three five. Quebec are gone already. The question, the problem is, Benji. I think Lotto a lot went wrong for them this year, and I I don't expect them to be that low next year. Although I, they, I think they should pick up Pozzo Vivo just to be safe. But don't say that for them, just because he a bit of a accrues some points. But goals for this team into Marche, Benji. First of all, it's survival. It has to be. Um, in getting as many points as possible. And then the second is trying to pick up some World Tour wins along the way, which they were trying to do this year. They have Valeria uh, Piva, I think. One of the DS seems quite bright. So that's how we're constructing the teams, or the lens which I'm looking sort of through it at. Uh, so the Classics team, Benji, for 2022, Alexander Kristoff, sven Eric Bistrom, Dimitri Klaes, Emil de Gent, and um, there was one other guy that was going to send. Anyone else that can do classic Baptist plank card? Would you send Girmay? Depends. I on would. Which sort of races? Like RVV? Come on, send them to RVV, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Maybe Adrian, Adrian Petit's come from Total, Team Direct Energy. He's 31. From the Horn uh, to, uh, to Obey is one that I would definitely do. Yeah. True, I think they got a decent, decent classics team. With I think there might be a group of ten in Ken Fablehem. You're like, oh, how how is Dimitri Klaes and yeah. Alexander Kristoff here? That's not bad. Just like in Ken Fablehem, they had Danny Van Poppel. Uh, boy, Van Poppel's still here, Benji. He didn't go with his brother, which I thought was illegal in in cycling. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's not. <laughs> uh, I but, think uh, he, did, he did all the classics this year, so maybe he'll go too. Yeah, I'd expect. Him too, but I feel like he's more leaning into a domestic role. Twelve in Dwarves of Vlaanderen, though, but that's also uh, one of the least interesting cobble classics out there in my eyes. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to move the needle, but he can definitely be a domestic. That's what I dare to say. Like a, a Pasqualon could also go to a Hint Wevelgem or a Kuren or stuff like that. But I think we're like scrapping the bottom of the barrel if we start looking like uh, looking at riders like that. To be honest, Pasqualon was a little bit disappointing. Ah. Uh... No, he's okay at the Giro. He got a fifth. But, yeah, I think he'll go to the Giro and focus on that. He did the early classics like Ken Fablehem and E3. Did not do RVV. Their Giro team, Benji. We've looked at the Giro parkour. I think it has to be stage hunting again. I think Taco again is is a risk. I would send Rain Tarame, Taco <laughs> van der Horn, and... Um, Germay, first stage, pink, come true, on. True, true, yep, yep. Lorenzo Rota, he's Italian and punchy. Germay, Clinton Hermans, and George Zimmerman. I'd send their stack team. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that this team should send someone for GC. They might actually end up having like one rider that might try to go for two, top 15, but I wouldn't do so. I would dare to say... Go for those breakaway stages. You were good at it in the Giro and the Vuelta last year. And it got you two World Tour wins in Grand Tours, which is bloody splendid. So that's what I'm looking at there. My question for you is, we've got Kristoff in this team. The Giro has more sprint stage than the Tour. Or would you send him to the Tour because there's a couple stage in there? He's got to go Tour. He has to. Like, he's got those, it could be rainy, he got those crosswind stages. He has to go Tour. And he's going to focus on classics. I think it's... He can't go to the Giro, especially when the Giro opens up with those punchy yeah. uphill finish. And they they actually, I, tw- I tweeted this at the time, they have a top three or four team for that first stage to take yellow. They have a realistic chance of getting it if they actually line it all up correctly with Fliegen, Zimmerman, Rota, Clinton Hermans, Germay. Maybe they send back Lance Benji, still on the team um, as well for some break experience. He did. Uh, hey, oh, you did the tour this year. Maybe he goes to the tour. I, I think they 
should be pretty happy. And then Pascal on for the sprints, or is there any other sprint? Team? Oh no, um, Peak has to go. Peak's going because that's why yeah. they signed. Yeah, him. you're right. He deserves to be there. So, would you send Peak for sprints or Pascal on? I would send. I would not send Peak for a. Uh... For sprints, I'm gonna keep calling him Bayak instead of Peak, but <laughs> unless he reaches peak form. But um, uh, I don't trust Bayak sprint yet. That one result doesn't shine to me as I'm gonna send him to the Giro as sprinter. That's not enough for me. Pasqualon, it is. They also have Simone Patelli, who's 28, sort of GC guy, won Ronda Lazard six years ago. Maybe he goes to the Giro as a token try and get a top 15 top 10 gc but the course kind of suits louis mankeys as well tour de france benji i think will be louis mankeys christophe svenerick bistrom dimitri kleis jan bakalans and uh who else who else is on this team that's about it really I, yeah I just, it's, it's quite difficult to uh yeah. form a tour de france team in my opinion in this one but um, yeah, looking at the parkour of the tour, I would also just say go for stage wins. You know, like you've got Christoph there for the sprints with Bistrim surrounding him, like like we mentioned earlier. And I believe that the rest of the squad would likely be indeed a Bacalons, perhaps an M8 again, stuff like that for the global stage and so forth. Um, I don't know. I feel like the Giro and the Velt are easier to win stages because Pogaccia wants to win mountain stages in the Tour de France. Um, I think you just fill it up with a taco van the horn for that cobble stage. Yeah, but he's done the he's done the Giro. Maybe he probably won't actually fit in that Giro team. Maybe I'm wrong in that sense. And they send Taco with Christophe and Co for the to the Tour de France. I don't know where Mankeys is gonna what what races he's gonna do, because the TT is obviously terrible or not great. And the Giro has no TT case. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But Louis Mankeys is usually paired with Jan Hirst. Jan Hertz still good. Remember that that pool he did in the uh, Carmonetera this year? I think Mankeys and Hirt also fill up this team for sort of some GC action as well. Uh, Vuelta, Benji, same team. Uh, actually, <laughs> well, no, no, not same team. Mankeys, Hirt, uh, Taco, Herben Tyson, and then I'd actually... Colby Holsons. Colby Holsons has to do one. Are you yeah. saying it or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he has to. Would you send Germain to the Vuelta or whether some a lot of finishes that sometimes suit him, and particularly this year, or would you uh, try and get him to clean up points at these all these like Italian dot pro races? I go for Italian classics because because I wouldn't Agreed. send the 21-year-old to two Grand Tours. As simple as that. You know what I like? You know I like to load him up, NG, and just... Three Grand Tours <laughs> for Germain. <laughs> so I think... They they got to be careful with the relegation, obviously, and I think the races we've spoken about are not the important ones. The important ones for them getting results is like Elstead and Ronda, Euro Metropole Tour, not the big races, but it's important that they are getting top fives at those races to accrue as many points as possible uh, for next year. So I think Christoph has a lot of – I think he should have a big workload and they need the other fast guys like Pasqualon Payak, uh, et cetera, to be delivering. And yeah, what do you, because the thing is, Rain Tara made great stage win. You don't actually get that many points for a stage win in a grand tour. That's, yeah. that's the problem with the system. Um, yeah, the system is completely fucked in that sense. They need Menkies to top two, top 10, a couple oh, of no. world tour stage races. Top, <laughs> top two. two would be kind of difficult, yeah. but uh, I, I do believe that top 10 in uh, world tour races would be nice. It's not going to be easy for Menkies, though. He's kind of slowly tried to make his way back, but he hasn't really reached it, in my opinion. Then again, he was about to uh, get relatively close in that Vuelta. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I feel like you're right that he should get those top 10 results, but would you go for GC with the Mankeys in both the Giro and the Vuelta, or would you send him to one Grand Tour? To be honest, like the, the way to get the points would be Giro, because Giro, he could... Top 10 at the Tour is hard. Like, it's really, you know, you got David Godu going for top 10, and he's, like, in the 8th to 10th region, whereas the Giro d'Italia, there's a steeper drop-off from 6th to 10th and a steeper minute drop-off often. Not always the case, but same with the Vuelta. So I think Giro, if you want to get the most points, Giro, Vuelta, how that fits in with stage hunting ambitions, I'm not sure. 
Lorenzo Rota, they're going to want to see him keep improving. Now, again, they did send him to the right races and accrued a lot of points like with Van Poppel at the end of the year or or sort of after the midpoint. He came fourth in San Sebastian, 220 points, and then six top tens in these Italian Doc Pro 1-1 races that we keep mentioning, you know, scoring hundreds and hundreds of points. So Roach is important for them as well at those races. And, yeah, I think – but still, it's going to be it's going to be a battle for them. What do you onto the hot takes, Benji, or maybe Ooh. our predictions? Three World Tour wins this year, which two of which were Taco Giro break and then Benelux Tour breakaway. One other World Tour win, the Vuelta stage win, and then some dot one wins. I'm setting the over under at two and a half World Tour wins. I'm going. Who? I'm going over. I believe in Germay. I'm going under. Ah, uh, I know. I'm going under, but I think they will be broadly more successful, as in, <laughs> or maybe just the same success. Um, in the form going, of Groupama, where they don't have Grand Tour wins, but lots of Pedal Pro wins or what? Yeah, just like lots of top three, top fours at these uh, smaller races, because that makes sense to focus on. And I think, I think Louis Mankey's top tens of Grand Tour. Uh, but we need to go some – we've got, we got some feedback, Benji. The hot takes are not hot enough. They need to be just bordering on lunacy, although I maintain Masnada over Almeida for the Giro GC is a pretty hot take given that one guy just got paid probably over 2 million euro and one is not being paid to, <laughs> near 2 million euro. What's what's the hottest take I can get? I think Alexander Kristoff uh, will podium a monument. Nah, it's not that hot. I think I think Binyam takes Malia Rosa. I think Rosa that's hot one. in 2022, to be honest. Yeah, it's not flaming yeah. hot though. I think Gurmai uh, gets the Malia Rosa stage one Shiro. I hope so, but I'm leaning towards just winning a Grand Tour stage. That's not that's hot my hot take. No. Uh, come on, okay, he will top five a monument. George Zimmerman will be one of the World Tour wins the German 24-year-old, one of the two I think they will get. And I think that Kobe Holsens will be... (laughs) No, that's just mean. I'm not going to say it. Um, I think... (laughs) You can't say Ian and leave B unsaid. I think uh, Jan Hirt will win the other World Tour race. No, that means Gimma is 1-1. Jeez, my maths now. The maths not adding up. Um, I don't know. Do you think this team gets relegated, Benji? I don't. Really? So you think they'll be above Cofidis? And above Lotto Sudal. That's, so that's the team construction problem with Lotto is what you're seeing in that they literally have no other... There's no other points, really, apart from there's Wellens, Tegent, Ewan, and then Ewan. nothing. There's a few Campanards points out there, perhaps, but I don't know. I feel like... I feel like Kristoff can get regular top 10 places in these dot one races that will get a lot of points while you and will just not go there exactly and like you look at like yeah some of the smaller races you and doesn't care i think christoph is going to be uh a top top 20 rider in terms of uci points maybe even top 15 i think he's gonna just accrue so many for this team uh but in terms of taking a jersey i think hopefully binningham garamai takes it but yeah Interesting to see where this project goes with Intermarche. They're slowly accruing some good riders, but there's still a lot of riders not really contributing at World Tour level on the team. The transfers for next year, maybe they'll try and fill out that slot and get a better GC rider. But otherwise, we hope you enjoy this preview of Intermarche Wanty Gobert, kind of a fan favorite for some people uh, this year. The plucky underdogs, everyone loves Taco van der Horn as well, MVP stealing Antwerp Port Epic from him. And uh, we'll see you with the next team maybe just before the new year. Until then, ciao.